NTSB has released its preliminary report on Commute Air Flight 4339, uh, making us a little bit closer to understanding uh, how and why a plane ended up almost crashing at the end of the runway. This was a 50-seat Embraer 145 that overran uh, Runox runway 34 on the 24th of September 2025. It came to rest in the Emus um, arrest a bit at the end of the runway and nobody was hurt. Before we're going to look into uh, what happened that day, we're going to take a look at the ATSC recording from that day. So we'll take a listen and then we'll get back to the report. Air 4339, ILS, runway 34. Commander 4339, run of tower, wind 250 at Niner, runway 34, clear to land, area of uh, heavy to extreme precipitation begins about four mile final all the way down to the runway. Clear to land, runway 34, roger, Commander 4339. PMOT 5834, turn right on Bravo, taxi Alpha Foxtrot to the ramp, this frequency. Bravo, Alpha Foxtrot to the ramp, with you, PMOT 5834. PMOT 5834, how are flight conditions on final? Uh, smooth, but pretty marginal visibility, uh, short final. Hey, Commander 4339, you copy that? Hey, Commander 4339, thanks. Commander 4339, tower. UPS 1269, continue standing by. We just had uh, aircraft run off into the EMS. Commander 4339, Roanoke. Commander 4339, go ahead. Commander 4339, are you guys uh, off the end into the EMS? Hey, Commander 4339. Roger, trucks are rolling now. Thank you. Commander 4339, when able to say souls on board? 53 souls aboard, Commander 4339. Any injuries? Negative injuries, Commander 4339. Commander 4339, Roger. FedEx 1362, Roanoke, stand standby, emergency in progress. Commander 4339, any hazardous materials on board? Negative, Commander 4359. Roger, vehicles on the way. So, the crew was on day four of a four-day rotation, flying their second leg of the day. Before departure, uh, the airplane had had some mechanical issues, and uh, they had to uh, disembark the passengers from the plane two times. So uh, when they finally got them on the third time and pushed back from uh, Washington dollars, they were delayed over two and a half hour. En route, the ATIS for Ruano called for calm winds with no rain and the uh, runway 06 in use. So that was uh, what the crew had planned for and what they were expecting. But the storms were moving in and uh, the approach then told them that the heavy participation was uh, starting to build up along the uh, approach for runway 06. So the path for the approach had changed and other planes were starting to use runway uh, 34 for landing. Runway 34 is uh, a shorter runway uh, with no glide slope, so um, it only has a, a localizer and uh, puppy lights, so it's uh, a more difficult approach. The first officer suggested recalculating uh, performance data for a wet runway. At first, this was something the captain declined, but later, as uh, the rain intensified, the captain asked for uh, the calculations. The first, uh, first officer ran the numbers and uh, found out that the plane would stop only about 200 feet short of the runway end, uh, and that was uh, if they didn't use their trust reversers. That didn't give them much margin for error uh, at all. Um, the captain briefed the go-around procedure and said that they would divert if they, uh, if they had to. On the final approach, uh, they were high on the puppy, and uh, the first officer noticed this uh, and called it out to the captain, which then uh, started correcting. After they crossed the threshold, they were still high, and the first officer called for a go-around, which the captain ignored. The captain continued the approach, and about halfway down the runway, still airborne, the first officer again called out a go-around, and uh, the captain again failed to uh, execute a go-around, but continued the, the landing. The aircraft touched down way too long, and uh, even with maximum braking and full thrust reversers, they were simply not able to stop the plane. So the jet overran the runway and uh, came to stop in the EMAS bed that uh, worked as it was intended. Initially, the first officer tried to transmit to the tower, but uh, the 
communication button had uh, disengaged uh, and once they got it reconnected, they uh, could confirm that everyone on board the plane was okay. The flight re- uh, flight attendant had reported no injuries among the passengers and the crew was also uh, in uh, good conditions. This was most definitely not a uh, mechanical failure. Um, it was a uh, human factor issue. Two go-arounds were called out and the two go-arounds were ignored. Uh, why? That is something the investigation uh, has to uh, dig deeper in, because in uh, modern cockpits, you for sure go around when either one of the pilots call a go-around. That's pretty standard crew resource management uh, and something that every commercial pilot is uh, is trained for. In all the times, it was quite common that the captain didn't always listen to the first officer, but in modern times, um, this has lo- uh, this has been uh, minimized, so it doesn't happen very often. But there are still some captains who think they are um, God, and uh, whatever they decide, that's what's going to happen. Fatigue from delays and the four-day uh, schedule may have played a role as well. Uh, we'll have to find out, uh, but go-arounds are pretty standard, uh, and it's a safety tool in case something isn't uh, like it's supposed to be. So... If you're in doubt, you you go around. That's how plain and simple it is. Otherwise, yeah, you'll end up crashing. Uh, uh, but in this situation, they managed to stop the plane in the email, so that's uh, pretty lucky. The NTSB uh, did not do an on-site investigation because there was no damage to the plane. Instead, the flight uh, data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder were sent to uh, the NCSB lab, where uh, several specialists among uh, specialists in human factor, ATC communication, uh, mythology, and uh, operations have been involved in figuring out why this accident happened and how it evolved. Um, The main goal is to figure out how to prevent it in the future. They, of course, will focus deeply on how... uh, it could be that the go-around call was ignored, uh, not once but twice. How communication broke down in the cockpit, and uh, even why performance calculations were delayed by the captain. So, in the end, 53 people were able to walk away because of uh, the EMA system uh, that uh, stopped the plane. Uh, so, at least one safety feature worked in this case. But a lot of things in this uh, accident simply doesn't add up and the 200 feet of margin in a, on a wet surface that's that's pushing it that's uh, pushing it by far and um, it just shows how quickly things can go wrong in a cockpit if the crew is not talking together and using the tool that they have at, at hand like a simple go around uh, could have changed uh, the outcome of this situation they would have gone around came back for landing and then they would have uh, landed and everyone would have had been able to walk home uh, happily that day uh, but that's not how it ended It would be nice to hear what you think about uh, this accident in the comments below. And uh, if you have uh, any ideas what caused the captain to ignore the two go-arounds. And also, a like and a subscribe would go a long way in my world. So uh, please hit those two buttons as well. So until the next time, stay safe.